Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Process Safety Management Introduction to Safeguarding Systems In this video course, you will learn safety and design for protecting process equipment integrity and loss of containment. What is safeguarding system and their role in managing hazards in chemical processing plants? The basic layers of protection in safeguarding philosophy. Additional layers of protection for increased safety for mitigating the consequence. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Safeguarding systems. Safety in design is one of the key elements in the development of process design package for chemical process plant. It focuses on developing inherently safe design to reduce the risk involved in the operation of the plant. Process plants consist of several process equipment such as reactors, towers and storage vessels interconnected by piping network. These equipment and piping carry huge inventory of hazardous process liquids at varying pressures and temperatures. Failure of any part of this equipment and piping has the potential to release the hazardous liquids to atmosphere that can result in human injury, fatality and cause serious harm to the environment. Hence, it is important that the process and mechanical integrity of the equipment and piping is protected at all times during running of the plant as well as startup and shutdown. What do you understand by process and mechanical integrity? How do you safeguard the process and mechanical integrity of the process equipment? Process integrity relates to the ability of the material of construction of the equipment to resist the corrosive nature of the fluid it handles. That is, it takes care that the material is compatible with process fluid and it does not fail by corrosion. Mechanical integrity relates to the ability of the equipment to withstand the pressure and temperature limits of the process at which the equipment has been designed. When these design limits are exceeded, the mechanical integrity of the equipment will fail and its ability to hold the content within disappears. The result is loss of containment. The process design and process safety management focuses on averting loss of containment of process equipment and piping and resulting release of potentially harmful hazardous material to atmosphere. What is loss of containment? Loss of containment is the failure of the vessel or the container holding the hazardous material. It may be a crack on or rupture of the vessel wall as shown in the figure. The process can be considered safe if the containment integrity of equipment and piping is maintained during the life of the plant. Is there a possibility that a well designed plant running at steady state conditions can become unsafe? In reality, process goes to dynamic state on several occasions due to changes occurring in the interconnected process environment. The operations of the plant have the potential to create situations which can cause the equipment to exceed its design operating parameters and lose its integrity. These situations include operating deviations that can be caused by human error, control system failure, equipment breakdown, loss of supporting utilities, external fire exposure, etc. Hence, it is important that the integrity of the plant is maintained at all time against these potential process failures. It is a safeguarding philosophy of the process plant 
that analyzes all such potential failures and develop methods to prevent any hazard. What are safeguarding systems? Safeguarding systems are systems that serve as different levels of protection against uncontrolled loss of containment. Process control systems are designed to maintain the controlled process variable at predetermined set points. As mentioned before, deviations do occur during the running of the plant due to control system malfunctioning, utilities failure or loss of power. Safeguard systems are designed to reduce the risk of malfunction of the equipment or instrument in terms of the hazards to as low as reasonably possible. By doing so, they serve to reduce the likelihood of a loss of containment incident. The main objective of the safeguarding systems are to protect the personnel, to avoid or minimize the environmental impact, to protect the assets, to avoid or minimize the production loss. How is a safeguarding system developed in a chemical process plant so as to achieve its objective? A safeguard system of chemical process plant consists of layers of protection. The layers of protection are independent measures that reduce the likelihood of undesirable adverse event or the consequence of that event if it were to happen by process control, prevention or mitigation. Every process equipment is subjected to detailed safety risk analysis and layers of protections are provided based on the findings. This diagram illustrates the basic engineering approaches to developing safeguarding system. During operation, the potential hazards are managed by preventive safeguards. When this fails, it leads to an incident, which is managed by passive safeguards such as mitigation methods to reduce the consequence of the incident. Process equipment to be safeguarded are reactors, columns, fluid moving equipment, vessels and heat transfer equipment. The process parameters to be monitored are pressure, temperature and level. There are in general five layers of protection as depicted here. Process control, process alarms to alert the operator for intervention, trip alarm for automatic shutdown, active protective layer consisting of safety relief or rupture disc, and finally direct and emergency response in the case of equipment failure. Active safeguards used to manage the hazards in process plant are Safety Instrumented System SIS, and Pressure Relief Devices. Safety Instrumented Systems Safety Instrumented Systems are an important part of safeguarding system in the process plant. It will be covered in a separate video in the coming weeks. Don't miss it. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec eLearn channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career-oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. Pressure Relief Devices Pressure relief devices are of two types, over pressure protection, under pressure protection. Over pressure protection. Process safeguarding system must ensure that it provides suitable protection against the maximum pressure that the process can generate in the worst case scenario under the malfunction. This is achieved by SIS and safety relief valves.
under pressure protection. It is possible in certain processes the pressure developed under the worst case scenario will be sub-atmospheric. Process safeguarding system must ensure that it provides suitable protection against sub-atmospheric condition or vacuum. The suitable protective measures against vacuum are design the equipment for vacuum, vacuum relief valves. A vessel not designed for vacuum has the risk of deformation as a result of negative pressure. A safety valve is a self-reclosing pressure control device for the protection of the vessel shell against unacceptable internal overpressure. Vacuum relief valve is a self-reclosing pressure control device for the protection of the vessel shell against an unacceptable external pressure. Vacuum relief valves are commonly used in atmospheric storage tanks intended for loading unloading operation of chemicals. Let us now consider a reactor and discuss its safeguarding system in terms of protection layers. The reactor pressure is controlled by automatic closed loop control system at 4.5 bar. Due to some malfunction of the instrument, the pressure has increased to 5 bar at which the pressure high alarm is sounded to alert the operator. The operator response did not yield the desired result and the pressure continued to rise to reach 5.5 bar. At this value, very high pressure alarm trip is triggered and the reactor is shut off. If the trip action is not triggered due to instrument malfunction, to protect the integrity of the equipment, the pressure safety valve is activated to release the pressure to the flare. If this action fails, the reactor shell ruptures at some weakest point and vapor and liquid is released to atmosphere. It leads to plant emergency which needs a response action to mitigate the effect. Similar safeguard system is developed for every process based on the risk and consequent analysis. Additional layers of protection. Additional safeguards. Lessons learned from the history of failures in similar process plants may indicate that there is a reasonable risk of equipment failure and loss of containment. Additional layers of safeguarding are needed for such systems. Most often, failures of this type are caused by severe operating conditions and mechanical robustness of the equipment being comparatively lower. Failures of this type will lead to release of flammable and toxic gases and liquids to atmosphere, having potential to cause vapor cloud explosion. Quick isolation of the affected equipment is needed to reduce the risk. Manual isolation is not possible in such situations because it is risky and also approach is not possible. Such risks are managed by use of Remote Operated Isolation Valves ROV. What are ROVs? These are electrically operated valves triggered automatically or actuated manually from control room DCS panel. Examples of application of additional safeguards include remote isolation valves ROVs for 1. Storage tanks to protect against transfer line failures 2. Pumps and compressors to safeguard against seal failures Shown in this figure is a hydrocarbon storage tank with pumps installed for supplying liquid to a reactor system. The vessel has a huge inventory of flammable liquid. Note, this tank is provided with the ROV at the pump section line close to the vessel outlet nozzle for isolating in case of leaks. The pump provided with ROV on the section line is 
illustrated in this figure. In case of mechanical seal failure, the leaked liquid flushes into vapor liquid mixer. A sensor located just near the seal detects this leak and sounds an alarm in the control room DCS panel. The operator acts on hearing the alarm, stops the pump and closes the ROV to limit the release quantity. ROV is provided usually on the suction line. On the discharge side of the pump, the non retained wall prevents or limits the liquid backflow from delivery piping. The above two additional layers of protection are intended to prevent vapor cloud explosion. Vapor cloud explosion is a hazard potential when the release quantity of flammable liquid processed at a temperature above the normal boiling point exceeds 4500 kg. Illustrated in this figure is propylene stored in two vessels. One vessel at atmospheric pressure at minus 47 degree centigrade, the other at 13.5 bar pressure at 32 degree centigrade. The risk potential associated with vessel A is lower than with vessel B. Do you know why? When the stored liquid at 13.5 bar pressure escapes to atmosphere, it becomes superheated. The degree of superheat equal to 32 minus minus 47 equal to 79 degree centigrade. As the superheat increases, the fraction of liquid flashing increases. As the quantity of flash vapor increases, the risk of explosion increases. Thus has a large potential for bleed, boiling liquid, expanding vapor explosion. Hence it is important to incorporate protection systems such as this to minimize the amount of liquid release from the storage tanks due to pipeline leaks and sea leaks. Another example of additional layer of protection is installation of flame arrester on a tank or a vessel the flue gas line to boilers and fire heaters or incinerators. Flame arresters prevent explosion risk associated with flammable gases by preventing the spread of flame. Flame arrester prevents 1. Propagation of flame burning inside a pipeline into other equipment 2. An external flame entering into a storage tank The additional layers of protection provided in chemical processing plants also include the following. Inert gas blanketing of storage vessels and day tanks to prevent formation of flammable mixes. Grounding and bonding to prevent accumulation of static charges. Safeguarding philosophy, mitigation measures. The mitigation safeguard measures include sprinkler systems and deluge systems in hydrocarbon storage installations, dike walls around storage tanks, blast walls in specific hazardous installations. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.